What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Team Slum Circus Live Duel here. On the left side, we have a branded Despia, and on the right side here, we have a Volcanic Horse. Two powerful decks that have been, you know, shuffled around a lot lately. We see that the branded strategy is still not hit on the ban list, and now we have Volcanics going to be able to be played with the Sinful Spell stuff, getting better every set. Um, you know, we did see it gaining popularity, as well as branded regaining a little bit of popularity. <laughs> branded regain joke right there. Um, but the thing is, is, like... Branded still kind of loses to the same stuff it always has loses to, um, whereas like the newer stuff, like we see the fire decks, um, these cards are absolutely crazy. The simple spell package is like a draw three, search, avoid in the draw phase. You get your like level one fires and the volcanic stuff's going into the fire stuff and vice versa. And then you have that bonfire coming out and then future sets as well. But if we're going to be seeing Branded when you're choosing to go first here, we will be having the opportunity to maybe puppet lock them. And at that point, then, uh, you know, you're locking them out of the game which is going to be quite difficult. But we are going to be seeing the Volcanic deck can be choosing to go first with the Horus cards, another powerful engine that has came out of uh, Age of Overlord. We're going to be seeing them activate Gold Shark and then sending a Shell, which is going to be able to dump the Imsteady. And then Shell can activate effect, paying 500 life points here to search for another copy of itself. And then we're just going to do it three more times, essentially dumping Shell, adding Shell, um, and then dumping the second Horus, Diamond Moot, or Blessing, whatever. And then we're going to do it one more time to go for the Happy. So we ended up paying a grand total of a thousand life points to be able to search here, which is fine. You know, you're getting your whole volcanic engine, which then you can just, or not volcanic, but your Horus engine, which then you can just special summon out all three of them. And you can go for it automatically the level eight. You can go for, um, you know, other stuff as well. And like continuing bodies is what's also is important about this. Like, yes, these monsters are good by themselves, but then you also just like get them rid of them or use them as SYZ material during the following turn of the King's Ark is still on the field, you'll just be able to special them once again, which is a quite quite good for reserves, like resource management, I suppose, as well as like big bodies. So we're going to see them just pass on this here. Now, they do have crazy effects when they do like get destroyed or something like that. So we have like um, Imsteady. Imsteady is, you know, if another monster or another card you control leaves a field by an opponent's card effect, while the card's main monster zone, you can send one card to the field of the graveyard. Um, you can send to Christian from your hand, blah, blah, blah. Add that to someone King Stark. Then Happy. Happy is... You can target two cards that are banished or in the graveyard. Add both of those to the hand or shuffle them into the deck. Um, and then we have the, of course, the Blessing, Diamond Mood, whatever. Um, while this card is in your main monster zone, if another card you control leaves a field, you can draw cards up to the number of monsters with different names in your main monster zone. So, you know, if they don't deal with this properly, they will be able to, like, draw a bunch of cards, add back a bunch of cards... We're going to see them go for the branded fusion route, going for Lube Lubelion, Albion, you know, shuffling back the Albion and Lubelion here to go for the copy of Mirror Jade, which is a great way to get rid of some of these monsters. I know King Sark does provide some sort of, uh, some sort of like blocks of horse monsters you control cannot be destroyed by card effects that do not target them. But banishing does not destroy, so therefore we will be able to activate the effect of the mirror jade we're going to be seeing the albion tag out by summoning that lubelion which can then place the copy of branded loss on the field and then we can also activate the effect of albion dumping another copy of albaz to get an additional draw as well which would be nice because we can also set up the copies of uh brandon red but we have the cartesia in the hand and so we can special them out which is why we dump the albaz and then now we can use a style essentially using the cartesia to go into um a copy of the uh, whatever his name is, a good old friend, um, Grand Ganal. But we're going to be seeing them flip up a uh, a volcanic trap here. We do have Super Poly in the hand as well, which can be quite nice. We're going to be seeing them going to be fusion summoning here to go for that copy of Grand Ganal. And then we get Lost as well as Grand Ganal here if we want it to. But we already have dumped Albion from the extra deck with Branded Fusion. Um, we could potentially go for a copy of the Alulu Wallet to try to summon out the Quem. I feel like you definitely don't send the Garua because you have Super Poly in the hand. And there you can make Super Poly their opponent. Um, you know, they are unfortunately Beast Spellcasters and Beast Warriors. Uh, as well as Waters, Darks, Winds, so you won't be able to use Super Poly on any of these cards. 
or in like Imsteady and maybe your own Garand and all, but you know, we can go for a copy of the McCurrier, which is a monster negate. And we can dump maybe a copy of the Titanoclad or even the copy of a uh, Lulu Wallet to go for a Quem. So dumping the Titanic Lab, which we'll be able to summon out the Quem here as well, you know, potentially saving that Lulu Wallet for the tag out of Grand Ganol, which is definitely probably the correct play there. They're going to take a second to read the Horus cards because, you know, these cards are problematic if you don't deal with them properly. They're definitely important to note. We could go Mirror Jade, get rid of, like, the Happy. You know, or we could just leave, like, it's kind of weird. We could leave the Beast on the field. Or ba yeah, I'd probably banish the Diamond Moot. And then Super Poly away. So we're going to activate the Mirror Jade, sending the Rinbrum here to get rid of the Imsteady. They are going to chain the trap here to draw and dump a card. Dumping Scattershot off Blaze Accelerator. This is actually going to be able to activate the effect. Uh, well, of course, they're going to be banishing the um, copy of Imsteady first. Uh, they will be getting a draw two here as well as the add back, but they're going to be going... They have, to, they have some chain links. They go, go. They can go chain link one blessing, chain link two happy, chain link three scatter shot. You know, dealing five hundred damage, and then that's going to be able to dump both and destroy all the monsters our opponent controls. We do have, we do have opening in the graveyard, so we will be able to protect. And we're gonna be dumping two more here from the deck, and they're gonna protect with the copy of opening. And then they're going to be able to add back two here, which is really nice, as well as draw two. And they deal another 1,000 life points to our opponent there, which is, which is kind of crazy, to be honest. You know, that burn. Um, and if they didn't have opening, it would have been a board wipe there. So having a nice little kind of uh, combo, I suppose. Like, it's kind of hard. Like, do you decide to get rid of... I feel like you keep the Imsteady, because the Imsteady can then get super polyed away. Um, but, like, happy... Like, the draw two is kind of crazy. But putting back those two cards, like, putting back that Imsteady is kind of nice as well. So I feel like you'd probably banish the Happy so that they can't add back those banished cards. And then, you know, yes, you'll probably lose two Imsteady, which is going to be able to destroy a card. But you're going to get an Imsteady here anyways. We see them move to the end phase, getting the Albion effect. And then it's going to be able to set the Branded in red. And then Titanic Cloud will be able to summon out the Quem here, which can then dump a copy of Retribution from their deck. We see them almost summon Albaz, but yeah, they definitely summon out the Quem. Quem can then dump the copy of Retribution because we already have we already have a Albaz in the graveyard, so we can just dump the Retribution there. So we do have Mir. Well, Mir Jade has been burned up. We have still the effect of uh McCurrier, which we could have like negated the draw to which is kind of a good card um, but they did chain block it uh, with the scatter shot there and i feel like there might have been a little bit of a misplay with like super poly but we're going to see the call of the grave here going getting rid of the copy of shell you know in case they do want to add that back and they're just going to pass turn on this. So we have Brandon Red still. We have Brandon Red Super Poly as well as the Grand Gnall to tag out into a Quiritus or the copy of, uh, of whatever you want. You could go for the second Mirror Jade as well with the Quem bring back Albaz if they get another monster on the field. We're going to see a Volcanic Rocket being normal summoned. This can give us access to a Blaze Accelerator. which we are going to be seeing. They can then activate this one, and that's going to be placing one from the great or from the deck or hand to the graveyard, which is really cool. So if their hand is loaded. We're going to see them activate. Dumping the Blaze Slayer from the hand here. This will let them special summon out a uh, Volcanic once per turn as well.
We could also see the copy of a uh, Imsteady. Like you put it back in their hand essentially at this point, and like this is gonna make them able to draw a card as well as search for King Stark, which is like deck thinning if they wanted to as well. We're gonna be seeing them activate the effect, sending the uh, Rim Fire here, which can then destroy the Quem. Then we're gonna activate the Rim Fire effect, banishing itself to most likely dump a copy of Emperor from the deck. And there are now two Volcanics that are banished, which is going to be quite problematic. You know, banishing that shell is not always the greatest for us. You're gonna see the trap card here gonna be drawing us a card. Sending the scatter shot, drawing us a card as well. And we'll take another 500. But they can't send two more from the graveyard. Because they're, they can't send two more from the deck because they are in the graveyard. Um, which is nice for us, but... So we've used both our spells and traps. We can, I guess, special summon out one, which are going to be summoning out the copy of um, Trooper, I believe it's called. Which just adds us one. Or adds this, okay. I didn't even know that Trooper did that. I thought it, I knew it did like the stuff with banish, or not banishing, but with the tokens, but. This card, you can have one volcanic card, wow, rather than itself. Wow, that's actually kind of nice. Any volcanic card, that's crazy. You see them give it a little peek at a mud dragon, so maybe thinking that the opponent does have a should probably set. Um, trying to play around it, perhaps. Or do they have maybe a should probably of their own? It doesn't look like it, though. We're going to see them activate the Amsteady effect, sending itself in the trap that they searched for free off the trooper there. Getting the King Stark and then getting that additional draw. Also having that like resource to be able to summon back up from the graveyard. They drew into fire recovery too. Holy. That would have been crazy earlier if we had to be able to like put back those copies of scatter shots. <sighs> Nuts. We're going to summon out the Emperor here by banishing the three. And then we're going to make them take five for every one. We have five, so that's going to be a good solid 25, I think. Bringing them down to quite a bit here. I mean, we could hit it with McCurrier. Like, we're just saving McCurrier for I don't know what. Going for the SP here. And it is a little bit late now. We also have the Imsteady that can just come out whenever he wants. We're going to see Fire Recover going to be activated here. Targeting the Rocket. And then sending the Room Fire once again. Then we're going to be destroying or banishing the Blaze. To activate and then search another copy. Okay, okay, okay. See what we're going to do in here. Yeah, I don't think... I think Brandon kind of burned their interruptions a little bit incorrectly here. They also don't have a second Albaz engrave to be able to go for that Rimbrum line. We're going to be seeing Fire Recovery now going to be banishing itself. Putting back those scatter shots into the deck. Oh, no. <laughs> This is going to be another scatter shot, destroy, burn for 15. Then we see a draw one. Like if they special summon as well, they will be able to uh, to essentially um, 
pay 500. We're going to see them a dump bit in trouble, though. with the trap in the deck. Activating the scatter shot effect. We see once. scatter shot going to be dealing another 500. And then they're going to activate it once again here, destroying two more from the deck. And then dumping another, thousand another two. And How did they get that again? All the monsters on the field. How did I forget that? Like, I wonder why they don't negate that with the Hoppy of Mercurier. Is there a reason in particular why we don't? I feel like you kind of want to save all your monsters. Or maybe the fact that they... I don't even know. Like, we're going to see Imsteady being summoned out here. Are we going to try to go for a copy of like... Nah, surely we can't. Like, they attempt to go Rinbrum here, banishing to bring out the Albaz. Albaz is going to activate its effects, pitching a copy of Cartesia. Surely they. Oh, and they're going to chain Super Poly to this. Choosing to discard two cards is crazy to me. Like, I feel like at that point you just don't, you just don't summon. Like you just don't activate the effect of the Albaz there. But they're gonna then see the Mirror Jade as well as Lost gonna be activate its effects. You know, due to what happening on the summon as well, we will be able to not get those. Uh, Triggers of the other boys. Or I guess they'll activate on res, so on a new chain. That's kind of unfortunate. We're going to get rid of the Diamond Mutt. Not learning our lesson from the last time. You got to get rid of Happy. Because Happy can just add back those copies of Scatter Shots. And I want to see them add the. Um, copy of Ad Libitum. I'm not sure that we can do that. Due to ad libitum not including a uh, a Albaz in its name, or being Albaz, I should say, um, that that will make the branded in red be quite stronger, to be honest. And then we're gonna be seeing the effect here of going to be able to summon back out, you know, being able to dump with the Amsteady. Dumping the diamond mood. Now we're going to be seeing them go for an XYZ. Going into a Coach King Trainer here. And this is going to force us to... Branded in red. Targeting the Albaz, most likely. Oh, they did have a second Albaz. In, or that, that's a climb, okay. And then I go for all three here. Which is going to go for the copy of the Guardian Chimera and like what's crazy about this is that Guardian the due to the fact that we have Ad Libitum in the graveyard or used in the hand now, we can go like one and two ad lib to get rid of the Coach King and then summon back out the Mirror Jade. Which is so free. Like this the fact that this can like draw two and then you can still activate the effect. And they're just reminding them what the graveyard effects that's going to happen during the end phase here. But they've gotten rid of so many of the stuff. Like, what else do you have in graves? So they go, they reveal what they have that can trigger. I mean, it is important that, you know, we do keep the order of the graveyard in the correct order. But we're going to be seeing the Rinfire being summoned out. We're going to see Happy being summoned out. This one has not been summoned out prior yet to this turn. But we could activate the effect. I guess the the horse carrots are all just um, inherit summons, so I know people hate that that word. But we're gonna see a typhon being smashed down here on the happy, and then it's gonna be able to activate the effects to bounce back the mirror jade, which is super fine with us because we have one in the graveyard already gonna be activating here, and we did protect our life points this turn. And we're gonna see a talent's gonna be able to take. And they have enough for game, unfortunately, there. Um, anyways, you know, they couldn't have added the ad libitum, which is a little bit of a misplay. But if they thought they could have, 
uh, which would have changed the game completely if they would have been able to do that. It understands why they kept those cards. I feel like you definitely should have not activated the effect of Granted, or the Albaz, but... Like, if he decided to not do Albaz effect, um, SP can't trigger. I guess yeah, you're hoping that you're trying to trade a card for SP not triggering, hoping that they already know you have Super Poly. But at that point, you're just giving away a card. And, like, yes, you have the... Um, you have the Grangle on the Graveyard. You have a uh, Al Albion. You have Retribution that's going to be able to add it back. Rare Infusion. Um, are you hoping that they bounce back your copy of Mirror Jade? Um, but like it, it, there is a lot. But just having the talents, you know, with that bunch of draws is just quite free as well. But moving on to the game two here, we're going to be seeing that Albaz is going to be choosing to go first once again here, and we could see a potential giving puppet law. I guess no. Yeah, they didn't go first last game. They went second. Okay. You know, we are 21 minutes into it. That was a long game one. You know, mind you, this is also at 2x speed, or I guess 1.7x speed, which is pretty crazy for a game one. Back and forth, really, just burning those life points down from the Volcanic player. And, like, not even activating the effect of the, uh, of the boy on summon. We're going to see a Brand Infusion be activated and Ash Blossom being smashed down. And then we hit them with a set three pass. This is the life of a branded player. We're going to see a trooper being normal summoned at the point where we're going to hit it with an imperm. You know, making sure they do not get any more searches because these cards are crazy to search cards. Then we're going to see them act with the effect of Insteady pitching itself and the Dimamute. The Blessing. To be able to search and draw. That would have been a beautiful Ash if I ever seen one. Activating the King Sark in the Imperm column here. But they will be able to special summon out both of them there. And then they realized that they played it in the Imperm column. The one Imperm column here. And we are looking at our extra deck. Therefore, kind of implying that we have a Super Poly. They're going to go Battle Phase and they're going to attack here. That's comical that they ended up playing it right in the uh, Imperm column there. What's also crazy is the fact that, you know, having a, like they have essentially f uh, 54 on board plus Trooper. I'm going to see them go for a Felgrand line here. I don't even know what the attack on Trooper is. Trooper's a thousand, okay. So they have 64 on board, which is very nice. They would have been able to get the copy of Happy. That would have been game itself because it would have been boosted up to 34 or 36. So it would have been like that itself is just game, which is crazy. Just those three horse monsters of Happy and Steady and Blessing. I see them go for a Felgrin, which is pretty nice. And they'll be able to activate the effect, detaching the Steady. And we just set one card here. I mean, we are very low on life points. So chances are we're going to be seeing the uh, the Volcanic Horse deck going to be choosing to win here. And then we're going to be activating the trap, which is going to then summon out the copy of Trooper once again. And that's going to let us search for a copy of the Blaze Accelerator. And then we draw for turn. And I think the the brand of player knows it's over here. We're gonna activate the accelerator. Gonna be you know activating the accelerator from the deck, or I guess sending it one from the deck. Then we activate the effect of shell here. We do see another super poly. Uh, we see another copy of the um, the imperm here. Then that's gonna be dumping us the happy. Then we can summon back the happy as well as the Insteady here from the graveyard. And they're gonna attempt to pop the monster with the effect of the trap. Or I guess the spell, I should say. It pops one and then lets them blow up one. But it is a McCurrier. That is so unfortunate. I see the Rimfire effect can activate. Sending most likely the copy of the Emperor. Which we will be able to see activate its effects there if we wanted to. And they are going to be super polying for a copy. <laughs> oh, they don't even have the Albaz. They're trying to go I can super poly for Rimbrum to bounce. But we're going to be seeing Volcanic end up taking it in a quick game two. Game one was very nice. You know, we did see a little bit of a misplay. But regardless, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see more content like this. 
Don't stay safe. Peace.